to the Build Smart, Lead Strong podcast on the Michigan Business Network. My name is Jennifer DeMud, Executive Director of the Manufacturing Growth Alliance, also known as MGA. For more than 75 years, Raymond has provided forward-thinking solutions to ensure their clients are successful. They have grown to become one of the largest financial services and advisory firms with nearly 900 associates in Michigan, Florida, and Ohio. They provide broad suite of services ranging from accounting and assurance, comprehensive technology, accounting and human resource solutions, specialized consulting and wealth management. With us today is Mike Powell. He is a principal and the director of manufacturing services at Raymond. Thank you for being here, Mike. Well, thanks for having me, Jen. Appreciate it. All right, let's dive into a few questions I've prepared for our conversation. Will you tell us a little bit about yourself and then about Raymond? Sure. Uh, I am a principal in our advisory and tax services located in our Detroit office, uh, which is relatively new in Capitol Park, which is a beautiful area. Uh, as you'd mentioned, I'm director of manufacturing services for the firm, and I'm a firm-wide resource for other aspects of taxes as well. So I, I lead our research and development tax credit practice. I'm a firm-wide resource in accounting methods and periods and other areas in which we try to reduce the tax burden for manufacturers. So basically 100% of my clients are manufacturers. So Raymond has grown significantly over the years and you've been in business for just over 75 years. What are a few of the areas of growth that Raymond has focused on over the past three years? Well, Raymond's a very entrepreneurial type firm. And so we, could, we, we saw a few years ago that technology was going to be a very important aspect of our manufacturers and all our client bases. So we, we, we merged in, uh, we have Raymond Technology Services now, which are an IT management firm and also help with cybersecurity. So the way I look at this, especially during a pandemic in which you have a lot of people working from home, if they're working at that office or that manufacturing facility, you have a moat around that facility from an IT security standpoint. Now that our people are working remotely, that moat around the facility is no longer there. So. Uh, over the last year or so during this pandemic, we've seen a lot of IT services um, that were, were needed with for, for all of our clients, not just manufacturing. And then with the pandemic hitting, um, a lot of HR services, helping people through the PPP loans and the employee retention credit this year, but also cash flows and doing projections throughout because if businesses were suspended, or gross revenue was down, helping those clients make it through the pandemic. So we've helped a lot of our clients through this, this, these last 13 or 14 months. I know the Manufacturing Growth Alliance has referred uh, several manufacturers over to Raymond for various reasons, some of which you just described. So could you share with us maybe a little bit of what's next for Raymond? What's, what's, what's on the horizon for how you serve um, small businesses and you know, specifically manufacturers? Again, one of our goals is to try to keep as, as much money in, the, in Michigan versus sending it to Washington. So we, we, we do help with, with taxes quite a bit and all, also the HR solutions and the IT. But also one of the things now in which we saw in the last recession was a lot of owners of manufacturing companies or other types of companies saying, OK, I just made it through this recession. I don't want to do some. I don't want to go through the next recession. So we saw that happening back in 2008, 9, 10 and 11 time frame. And I, we see that happening now where, you know, a lot of companies are saying, a lot of owners, family owned businesses, like, you know, maybe it's time for us to sell. Mm -hmm. um, so we're helping with those business valuations, helping them get to the value that they think they want. But also one of the other thing is succession planning in which, okay, now you've sold your business. What can Raymond Wealth do for you to manage that money? Uh, th th those types of efforts to help those businesses if they're, if they're looking to get out of the industry. So I, I foresee that coming up as well. Yeah, we've also seen too that um, there are a lot of small businesses, including manufacturers, that um, having gone through the pandemic, they have they are starting to make some long term decisions of maybe it's time to transition. And like you know, Mike, and, and our audience may know, 
uh, succession planning just doesn't happen overnight. Um, no, and you, you actually really, you took you took the words out right out of my mouth, Jen. Go ahead, in which, Mike. In which, um, let's say I want to sell in six months from now. That's that's mm -hmm. too short of a time frame. So you have to you have, you have to look out a couple years, three to five years in advance, because if you're looking for a, a certain amount to sell your business, Raymond can help you get to that factor in which that business will be worth what you're looking for. So, and it's hard to do in six months, right? But also you have estate planning and trust planning, things like that, that, that Raymond can, through the whole ball of wax, can help that, that business owner. So the employee retention credit has surfaced a few times um, with some manufacturers that I've been talking with. Could you explain what is the ERC and how does it affect manufacturing? It's funny you say that, Jen, because uh, a year ago I was in charge of manufacturing and also the director of tax consulting. So I was part of a team to disseminate all this information out to the firm in which uh, the, 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 the flags of the marks are changing daily by the IRS and Congress, right? And so first the PPP loans came out and then the ERC came out as well under the CARES Act. And at first, if you got a PPP loan, you couldn't take the employee retention credit, but they changed that. So if, if so, you can, you can, you know, get that PPP loan and that, that, that loan goes away in which you don't have to pay it back under certain circumstances, but also the employee retention credit. And the way that works is in 2020, and not to get too much in the details, I believe we're going to have a webinar coming up on the, the employee retention credit. But if your business suspended operations or from a gross receipts condition standpoint, you still continue to pay wages. Uh, even though you got the PPP loan, you can take a credit for that. And the way that calculation works is um, the maximum is $5,000 per employee uh, for 2020 payments, or for 2021, it's up to $7,000 maximum per employee, okay? And the way you, you get that money back or that credit is on your employee taxes form, the form 941. Mm -hmm. And so let's say an employee is filing their quarterly 941, and they have an employee retention credit. And again, the, the credit is kind of convoluted or the calculation is kind of convoluted and Raymond can help you with that calculation. So you can file uh, a 941 and not have to make deposits because you have that credit to offset that, the, those, those, those needs or those, that, those expenses. And if your deposits requirement is less than what your credit is, you can file another form, uh, form 7200 with the IRS to get that money back. Hmm. Sounds like you're the person to talk to, Mike. <laughs> Actually, um, someone spoon fed me that because, you know, <laughs> taxes are taxes are, are very large in topics. And so, no, we have four or five people within Raymond that are basically specializing in this and know it inside and out. So um, and hopefully that's, you know, some of the learnings we'll, we'll be able to provide in that webinar coming up in May. Excellent. So thinking of uh, tax credit. The Michigan R&D tax credit has surfaced a little bit over the past few months. Have you seen manufacturers leverage this tax credit? Uh, if you could just share a little bit on who qualifies for it. Okay. Um, well, first of all, Michigan doesn't have an R&D tax credit. They used to, mm -hmm. but the federal government does, okay. and about 38 other states do. The way Michigan's tax laws work in their forms, uh, those went away about 10 to 15 years ago. But there is a federal R&D tax credit, which is one of the most underutilized tax savings opportunities for manufacturers. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty much every manufacturer, even though they might not, might not be aware of it, qualify for the credit. So if you're developing newer improved products or new improved manufacturing processes, especially we saw a lot of manufacturing companies this past year, and I think one of the words of 2020 or 2021 was pivot, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people pivoted. And so once we got back through the pandemic and we had to have social distancing and things like that, people had to automate some of their manufacturing processes or develop new manufacturing processes to keep employees socially distanced, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're the, if, even if you have engineers on staff or uh, manufacturing engineers, most likely these individual companies qualify for the credit. And so Raymond is thought of as one of the best practices with the IRS when de determining what size credit you are. But one of the other items with the R&D credit is to make sure that we have it properly documented. 
So you get the expenses for wages, supply costs, or any outside vendors you use during your R&D um, qualifying activities. You get those deductions, but also it's like hitting a double or two run home run. You also get a credit to offset your taxes as well regarding those same expenses. Well, Michigan um, just um, announced an industry 4.0 initiative, uh, the MEDC, the Michigan Economic yeah. Development Corporation, when you mentioned advanced technologies, you know, that might be a, another webinar or something else that we can educate our manufacturers on is as they advance their technologies for 4.0, that this federal R&D tax credit, not a Michigan, right. can be leveraged. And um, so we'll certainly keep our manufacturers up to date on how they can um, seek more information on that. But we're, and it's where the activities are dociled at or domiciled. So let's say we have a manufacturing company in Michigan, but they also have operations in another state. And so both, both facilities are probably having qualifying activities. So we could possibly offset another state's income taxes if, if they have different op or other operations in a different state. Okay, Mike, I'm going to pivot uh, okay. to an, another set of questions. Um, Raymond works a lot with manufacturers. You specifically work with, um, with all manufacturers. Through your lens, what are the biggest challenges for manufacturers and how are you able to help them with some of these challenges? Uh, a lot of the manufacturing clients we have are more, mostly closely held or family owned businesses, right? And so they're not the large big three in which they have thousands of people in their costing departments, right? And so are we making our widget at the appropriate or what's the cost of our widget and are we selling at the appropriate prices? Right. And so one of the things we help a lot of our manufacturing companies is going in and doing costing studies to make sure that what they are actually making and what the cost is attributed to that. You know, you have overhead, direct, indirect expenses, but there's other ancillary expenses associated that, with that. So we have uh, a group of individuals that can go in and help companies understand what their costing system is. Mm -hmm. And also from an HR standpoint, we, we help a lot of manufacturing from an HR standpoint. As manufacturers um, seek to explore new markets, you even mentioned, um, you know, manufacturing facilities in other states or extensions of their headquarters. Um, and they're thinking about acquiring new customers in other states. Is there anything that manufacturers need to know regarding taxes in, in other states as they look to new markets? Uh, yes, it, it, and you, now you're going to kind of make me sound like a tax nerd. Um, so there was a Supreme Court ruling just a few years ago in which kind of opened up the um, Pandora's box for states, how they can tax businesses in their, uh, in their particular state. So it might not even be setting up operations in a different state. It might be just delivering goods to that state, and it's called the Wayfair case. So it comes, it comes back to income taxes and sales and use taxes. And so when people think of like different states, we're in the United States, we're gonna, we're gonna set up operations in Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, or wherever it be, international taxes seem a lot cooler and more difficult, but uh, state and local tax planning is really not much different than international tax planning. So there's a lot of moving parts when it comes to state and local taxes. And we have a very good group of individuals that head up our state and local tax practice in which we can go in and help those manufacturers decide if there's exposure items that we should be paying taxes in those states, but also if maybe they're, we have, they should be filing in different states, either sales and use or income tax, but sometimes they can go in and do different planning options to reduce their overall state taxes. So you might be paying in different states, more states now, other than just Michigan, but we can reduce your overall state tax burden. So this is my last question. It's actually a two-part. Um, when do manufacturers need to call Raymond? And the second part is, how do they get in touch with you? Well, first of all, uh, one of the, the things I always typically, when I meet with a new manufacturing client or any new type of client, is what keeps you up at night. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot, it, it's facts and circumstances. Certain things might be HR, or, or, or employee talent, trying to, to bring in employee talent, right? So that might be what's keeping that business owner up and we can help them with that. The other might be cash flow or costing, or it might be taxes, overall tax burden. So we have over 800 manufacturing clients within Raymond 
And we provide all these different value added services to meet their expectations and let them do their financial goals uh, the way they'd like to. So that's that's kind of how Raymond works. We have called as a one Raymond approach in which you have not just your typical business advisor meeting with you, but all these other specialists that can come come in and help you with all your business operations. And how can they get a hold of you? Should they go to the website or should they contact you directly? Mike? They can contact what, what? me directly or it's or it can go to Raymond.com, R-E-H-M-A-N-N.com. And we have a wealth of um, information on our website. And if they want to look up Mike Powell, they can, can uh, contact <laughs> me directly. Or if the MGA would like to give my, out my contact information, I'm more than ha- happy for that business owner or that manufacturer whatever's keeping them up at night, put them in touch with the the person that can help them out. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mike, for joining us today. We appreciate everything that you do to support small to medium manufacturers in Michigan. You offer a wealth of services and knowledge to support their growth. So thank you so very much for being with us. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Absolutely. You have been listening to the Build Smart, Lead Strong podcast on the Michigan Business Network. Join us next podcast when MGA talks with a small manufacturer in the Upper Peninsula.